Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rabia. I hope you're all doing extremely well today. So this video is brought to you in association with the dudes at Jam Pedals. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll have seen that I've done plenty of demos with Jam over the years. They make outrageously good pedals, all sorts of different stuff, whether it's drive, fuzz, uh, modulation effects, delays, all that kind of stuff. And the last video that I did uh, with Jam Pedals, I had a really, really good time and actually came up with one of my favorite little sort of random improvs in the middle of the demo, which I really love. The cool thing about Jam Pedals for me is that they're inspiring to, to use and therefore allow me to create things. And on top of that, they have what I would consider to be a very sort of childlike approach to their visuals and I mean that with the most respect and, and uh, it's more of a compliment in the sense that the visuals of the pedals just promote having fun with them. Today we're looking at a brand new pedal which is the Dele Lama Extreme. So the Delay Lama, which has also got one of the coolest names ever, uh, is a delay pedal, analog delay pedal that uh, Jam have had out for a while, and I reviewed that before. Uh, whereas the Delay Lama Extreme is just a more extreme version of that particular delay. So firstly, it's an analog delay, uh, but on top of that, it has loads of amazing features that really will make this one of the most creatively inspiring delay pedals I think I've come across in quite some time. So there's quite a few things to let you know about the pedal in terms of how it works, the functionality and what it can do. So we'll take a quick look at the close-up and I'll breeze over as much of the feature set as possible and then we'll just crack on into some tones. So as you can see the close-up of the pedal, it's got a massive llama on the front with little lightning bolts which is just the coolest thing ever. The layout is quite simple so all the functionality is hidden within the pedal and co button combinations and things like that. So along the top you've got your time of your delay, you've got your repeats, and then you've got your level. Next down, we've got toggle switches. Uh, this is for trails, but it also activates a buffered or non-buffered bypass, uh, buffered or true bypass, should I say. Then we've got a kill dry, so if you just want the effect and no dry signal. Uh, and then on the right hand side there, you've got a three-way toggle switch for your tap tempo divisions. So eighth notes, quarter notes, and dotted eighth notes. Then along the bottom, you've got your on and off. You've got your preset select and your extreme mode activation. Then you've got the alt, uh, alt switch, uh, the alt button, which is how you access secondary functions. And then you've got your tap tempo, which if you hold down also gives you uh, infinite sort of feedback mode. So you can do some really crazy, wicked sort of analog delay feedback sounds, which is really cool. They've definitely expanded on the controllability of this pedal as well. So you can actually plug in external pedals and switches for different functions. You can have an expression pedal out on the side. You've also got TRS remote input, and then you can also plug in an external tap tempo as well. We've also got some internal trim pots, which even further allow us to affect the sound of this pedal and some of its functions. You can control via an internal trim pot, max repeats, max decay on the trails. Uh, and then on top of that, you can select between CV mode or EXP mode. If you're using an expression pedal, obviously you want to switch it into that and vice versa. The middle foot switch allows us to toggle between one of four presets. So if I turn it on, the middle light comes on saying we're in preset mode. So then you can scroll between all four presets and then back out into manual mode. You can also save and store presets once you find something that you like. Uh, very much like a lot of other pedals, it's a case of pressing and holding and it will save in that particular corresponding preset slot. So aside from being an incredibly cool analog delay, the Delay Lama Extreme has four extreme modes accessible by holding the preset button down. That middle LED pops on, meaning you're in extreme mode. Now you've got four to toggle between. And how you do that is you hold the alternate button and as you can see, the first LED is flashing, meaning we're on extreme mode one. So if you press tap, we go to extreme mode two, three, and four. Those extreme modes consist of vibrato. So you've got like a modulation vibrato. You can control the speed and the uh, depth of that. Then we've got tape age, which essentially allows you to control the sort of high end, uh, sort of the low pass of the delay and also like the uh, quality of that tape sound. So it starts to get a bit more warbly and a bit more modulated, which is cool. Uh, then we've got something called random, which is essentially a randomization of the time of the delay, the divisions of the delay and the repeats on top of, yeah. And it basically creates like a weird sequential oscillating sort of analog synth vibe kind of thing. And then finally, we've got uh, pitch shifting, which is very cool. So it uses that analog delay circuit with some crazy wizardry inside the pedal to basically give us different patterns and intervals of uh, sort of harmonic delay uh, repeats. So you can control things like the intervals using the R control here, and there are one of five 
and then you've got one of five different patterns to choose from. And how you control those is you basically hold down the Alt switch and if you put it next to that dot, that's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So hopefully that all makes sense. When you let go, it will reset so you can put everything back to normal. So I think that covered everything. There's definitely a lot in this pedal. It's definitely a tweaker and I want to sort of explore all the different sounds. So hopefully John made that nice and concise and we can crack on into the tones. So for this video, I'm using my brand newly modded Fender Custom Shop Strap with my anodized gold scratch plate, which is very cool. The Radio Shop pickups in there, running into the Victory VC35 into the Ox Box. And I've also, just for a bit of extra gain, I've got the Origin FX Revival Drive Compact, which I'll stomp in if I want to get some gain. But let's crack on. So here's the sound of the guitar straight into VC35. Uh, the reverb is just a bit of plate from Ox. Let's start by just hearing how the delay sounds. Everything at 12 o'clock. Let's have a listen. That's so analog and awesome. That's a cool little jam that just came out of thin air and that was just using a bit of revival drive uh, for drive of course. So let me show you the tap tempo real fast just because it's worth pointing out. So of course in quarter note it's accurate to the way you tap so. But if I put it in eighth note it's going to be double the speed so. And then in dotted eighth notes you've got offbeat triplets kind of. So if I go one, two, three. Four. which is really cool. Weird though at the end, but you get the point. It's just, it's nice to have that very easily done at, the uh, at your feet. Uh, so that's really cool. And of course, you've got the out on the side so you can control that externally if you want to. So let me show you the kill dry real fast. It's worth pointing out the trails on. That's where it start, It becomes buffered. So you get that kind of harmonic feedback a lot quicker. Um, so check this out. <laughs> So this is with uh, trails off, if I turn them on. So I don't know why that is exactly, it could not be the case, but to me that's what happened, uh, that's what it sounded like when I flicked the trails on, it suddenly starts to go way more crazy into the feedback world. So that's the basic functionality of the pedal sorted. Next is, I suppose you could scroll through the presets and they're demonstrating all the different four extreme modes, but I'd rather go through them myself. So uh, let's do that now. So we press and hold the preset button, middle light comes on, now extreme mode is activated, we're in number one, and just to double check if you hold the alternate button, you can see that we're in number one there. Uh, so now that is vibrato. So let's see how it sounds.
So obviously that's really exaggerated, um, but let me show you how you can control the speed and also the depth. So firstly, the depth is controlled using the rate knob, but you have to be holding the alternate switch. So currently I think the depth is quite high. So that's full depth. That's intense, um, but we can take that back out if we put it quite low. So it's a little more manageable like that. And then we've also got control of the speed. So let's have it super fast for a minute. Turn the depth up a little bit. Absolutely wonderful sounding delay with that modulation going over the top as well. Really adds a width to it and uh, certainly more vibey. Uh, but that was extreme mode number one, so let's move to extreme mode number two. So you press Alt and then tap. We move over. Now we're into tape age. So this is where we can create like a really warbly tape sound. Um, so only one of the secondary functions is active in this, and that's using the level of the delay. If you hold the Alt button down, it controls the frequency um, of the of the aging basically gives you like a low pass effect. Very cool. And again, it's it, the thing about the Dalai Lama that I liked, and it's still got it, is it's just so analog sounding. It's just like, here you go. Just have loads of awesome, warm, you know, imperfect, which is the thing I love about analog sounds. Um, that's in this box and it's just, it's great. So I'm loving it so far. So where things are gonna get really weird is now in the random mode. So let me swipe on over there to extreme mode number three. And like I said, this is random. So you don't actually have any secondary controls over this. It's basically just a bit of everything and completely weird uh, and loads of fun. And I think the best way to affect this is to use uh, the time knob. That's how you're gonna really hear some cool stuff. So I suppose in essence, time knob is how you really do affect the random mode overall. <laughs> That's insane. I'm going to put kill dry on so you really feel it. So as you can hear, random mode is very random, but I think it's more of an effect. It's the kind of thing you'd put as a layer, and if you're in the studio, I would use that all over the place as layers to really create tension and stuff. And if you imagine at the beginning of a set or like halfway through and you wanted to go into like a weird section or whatever, you could you'd go into that mode and just basically just add loads of cool ambience and textures, throwing the kill dry on and then just letting it do its thing and yeah. <laughs> It's 
just crazy. I love it. I would use that. I know I'd use that. I'm, I'm sure some of you listen to it going, I don't know how I'd use that at all. But for me, it's a layers thing. It's a textures thing. So I love that. I think that's awesome. I would definitely use that. I'm into it. So finally, the fourth extreme mode, which is the one I'm most looking forward to, um, that is the pitch shifter. And we're going to be able to control different sequences and intervals with this. So it's going to be really fun. So the intervals are controlled using the alt switch and then the rate knob. So you've got five different intervals to choose from. And then you've got five different patterns to choose from. So in terms of the modes that you can put this into, in terms of intervallics, uh, in R1 position, you've got an octave above and below. In position two, you've got a uh, second above and below. In position three, you've got perfect fourth above and a perfect fifth below. In position four, vice versa, so perfect fifth above, perfect fourth below. And then in position five, you've got a ninth above and a seventh below. So that's very interesting. I'm sure that one sounds pretty mental. Then there are one to five patterns here. Obviously, you have to control these using the Alt switch, keep it held down and, and select. In the fifth position, it basically expands, I believe. It allows you to use our uh, octaves below and above and on top of that, uh, ninth and seven, so it becomes a really stretched intervallic mess in a nice way. Um, so this one I'm looking forward to. Okay, so now I'm going to do the intervals and the patterns in the same time because there are so many different combinations it would be a very long video. So we'll just select um, octaves, so alt down and then you go to position one and we should have just the octaves. I really love that. It's immediately got song vibes written all over it, and that's great. Okay, that's pattern one. This is pattern two. More of a swung vibe. Pattern three. They're obviously all capable of getting really weird as well. Right, let's try this one. So that's a really unique sounding pedal. It's very strange and it does a lot of weird stuff. And it's one of those things where you need to spend time tinkering to find a cool preset that kind of gels in with the part that you're trying to write or something like that. Case in point, there are obviously four presets designed to show off all the different modes in here. So we'll quickly breeze over those and jobs are good in. So in terms of the preset functionality, as I said before, we can scroll through all, all four. You can save your own if you want to, but as I said, the guys at Jam have created four presets to show off the extreme modes. So one being, of course, the first extreme mode, which is your modulation, then two is tape page, three random, and four, all the interval stuff. So let's start with preset number one. This should be modulation. <laughs> So that one's cool. Preset number two, this is our uh, tape age. Cool. 
Okay, so that was awesome. Let's move on to preset three. Sounds like nightmares in the best possible way. Finally, preset four. Let's check this out. That's a cool sound. go i hope i managed to get through all the different features and show this pedal off because it's one of those that it's such a tweaker and you want to sit there and you really want to get into it and then find things and some of those things take a while to get to because it's just that type of pedal like all these pedals that have lots of different things they can do it's a case of tweaking tinkering until you land on something that you like that's awesome which is what happened just at the end there I managed to find this really cool sequence that just had this mixed in with the overdrive from the origin effects created this amazing sort of synth power chordy do doomy kind of sound that I was really into now that would be quite hard to do if I was synced up with my drummer and everybody but if that was the beginning of a track or a layer or something just to accentuate or just if you're writing at home and you're recording and you're creating your own music at home uh -oh, I'm just going to use that, I'm going to use that sound definitely I hope you can tell I'm excited and I hope this video was enjoyable to watch and all the sounds came through because it's so much fun uh, but anyway thank you to Jam Pedals for sending this over let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to know your thoughts and how you'd use this in your rig. It was a great analog delay pedal as it was, but now adding this stuff in there, and it's just opened up a whole new universe of cool weird sounds and songwriting inspiration that you could, you could get out of it. So thumbs up from me. Love pedals like that that just inspire you to create. So yeah, awesome. I'll put links in the description box below for you to check this out for yourself. Uh, but thank you for watching this video, like, subscribe and share, and I will see you all very soon.